The AT&T Center officially opened for the first day of early voting. Right now on the News at Noon, a look at the mega voting center as people wait to cast their ballots. And we're tracking our next front. This one packs a punch. Could bring a few showers with it. We'll talk about that forecast coming up. Live from KSAT 12, the News at Noon starts right now. And we are going to start with video just into our newsroom. These are massive lines at the Tobin Library on Harry Wurzbach. Yeah, it's a great video. We have several crews at various voting locations around town. We're hearing that people are waiting between two and three hours to this, vote. This, is, of course, is a story we're going to be following all day. Look for updates throughout our later newscasts and on KSET.com. And as we just said, early voting kicked off this morning. And you saw it already. The lines are long. For the first time, the AT&T Center has opened its doors to be a mega voting center. Our Sarah Costa spoke with voters in line about their experience at that new location. The line here at the AT&T Center has been relatively long since the doors opened at 8 o'clock this morning. We spoke with voters. They said their wait in line averaged anywhere from 45 minutes to about an hour. But remember, you don't have to vote here. You can vote at any of the nearly 50 polling locations within the county for early voting. That includes the new mega voting center here at the AT&T Center and Shrine Auditorium. Now, crews have set up hand sanitizer and disinfecting wipe stations, plexiglass, and voting machines inside the center are spread apart. Now, we spoke with one couple leaving who said they waited about an hour in line, but they said that wait was worth it. We felt it was incredibly important to vote, and, and this is our community, so this is why we wanted to come down to the AT&T Center and, and be a part of uh, something new and different. Inspiring to see all ages, like young, middle age, elderly, all coming out. Um, to exercise our right. It's inspiring. It, it's nice to see, and it is a sense of community coming here and seeing everyone here for the, the greater good of our of our country. Also, they said they felt relatively safe while voting inside the AT&T Center with all the election officials wearing PPE and the majority of voters wearing face coverings, which are strongly encouraged. Remember, you can vote at any of the 48 locations and early voting will go through October 30th. For more information on any of those polling locations, what time the polling locations will be open, and what you need to bring to vote, just head to KSAT.com. From the AT&T Center, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. President Donald Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden going full force in their campaigns as Election Day is exactly three weeks away. ABC's Rena Roy has the latest as the president holds his first rally since being diagnosed with COVID-19 and as voters cast their ballots on the first day of early voting. President Trump welcomed back to the campaign trail by a mostly maskless crowd standing shoulder to shoulder in Florida Monday night. It's great to be back. In just over a week since his COVID-19 diagnosis, the president, maskless himself, throwing out masks to his supporters. I feel so powerful. I'll walk into that audience. I'll walk in there. I'll kiss everyone in that audience. I'll kiss the guys and the beautiful women and them. Everybody, I'll just give you a big fat kiss. The president was also not wearing a mask as he left the White House and boarded Air Force One. In a new letter, White House doctor Sean Conley says the president is not infectious and that he tested negative on consecutive days. The longer Donald Trump is president, the more reckless he seems to get. Joe Biden slamming the president in the battleground state of Ohio. Hello, Toledo! Where his supporters were socially distant, in their cars honking their horns instead of applauding. <laughs> Voting is already underway in 45 states. People in Atlanta waited more than five hours before they could cast their ballots Monday. In Columbus, Georgia, the lines started before sunrise. So I got up about 5.15 this morning. Uh, got me a cup of coffee, came out here, the line was progressively getting longer. Some saying they don't trust voting by mail. I want to see it say submitted. In Texas, a judge has upheld Governor Greg Abbott's order limiting counties to one drop-off ballot box per county. Early voting begins there today. And with so many people mailing in ballots, voters are being urged to track theirs to make sure they're counted. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York.
Now to some of our local news. Fire investigators believe they know what started a late night house fire just north of downtown. Crews say this home in the 300 block of East Euclid Avenue near I-35 went up in flames just before midnight. Investigators believe the fire was started near a wall on the outside of the home, potentially by a group of homeless people. Fortunately, no one was inside the home and there were no reports of injuries. SAFD says this is not the first time they've responded to a fire at that location. Meanwhile, San Antonio police are looking into an early morning shooting on the south side of town. According to police, a 19 year old man was shot just after midnight on Southwest 28th and West Academy streets. Officers say the man was shot in the chest by another man who ran off. The victim was taken to Bamsey in stable condition. SAPD says while at the scene, a second person suffered a cardiac episode and was also taken to a hospital. It is unclear at the time if that person was involved in that shooting. A man's in critical condition this noon after police say he was stabbed near downtown early this morning. It happened around 430 in the parking lot of a Luby's near East Elmira Street and North Main Avenue. Police say the victim showed up at Methodist Hospital with that stab wound. Investigators still don't know what led to that stabbing and so far they have not made any arrests. And police are still searching for the driver who crashed into a train today at around 340 this morning when it happened on Quintana and General Hud now when police say the driver of a pickup truck just drove right into the train. The collision damages the front of the train. However, the suspect managed to get out of the truck and run away. Starting today, people without any COVID-19 symptoms will be able to be tested for free at some of the city's testing sites. In the past, people were required to show symptoms of the virus before receiving a test. The testing sites offering free testing are the Ramirez Community Center and the Cuellar Community Center. They're both open from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. You don't need an appointment to get a test. They will be given out in a first come first serve basis. Meanwhile, the city and county officials here locally have reported 46 new COVID-19 cases and no new deaths in our latest report. That brings our total number of cases to just under 60,000. In addition, 184 patients are currently hospitalized locally with 78 in intensive care and 40 people on ventilators. And South Texas Blood and Tissue Center is still in the need of blood donations. So there are several drives set up for this week to meet their goal today. There's a blood drive at Santicos Entertainment Costa. Blanca. That is in the 11,000 block of Alamo Ranch Parkway. Donors at this drive will receive a free movie ticket. And there will be two other opportunities this week. One at NISD's Paul Taylor Fieldhouse on Wednesday. And that will take place on Thursday as well from noon until 2. And then again on Thursday, there's another one at Stone Oak Holiday Inn. That one is from 11 to 4. Of course, you'll need to register first. We've got a link to help right now with all that information for you on our website. Still ahead, a voting experience unlike any other. We'll have a preview of this week's Case Out Explains voting during a pandemic. Plus, the latest on Dak Prescott after a brutal injury on Sunday. What the team's VP has to say about the long-term plans. And imagine having started your business the same month COVID hit. After the break, Max Massey shares the story of a local dentist who's still dealing with those effects. Well, opening a small business is never easy, but opening in the middle of a pandemic is even a tougher task. And starting a dentist's office has an entire new set of obstacles. Max Massey shows us how Origins Dentistry is using rare top tier technology to keep their patients and staff as healthy as possible. Starting a small business is never easy, but during a pandemic, it is a tough task. Joined here, doctor, the head of Origins Dentistry. So you guys started building right before the pandemic hit. Was there ever a worry that it wasn't going to open? Yes, definitely. Definitely it was really an uncertain time, but with the help of our support team, the experts that help us during the journey, we were able to go through that journey and start a couple of months ago. You guys were able to manufacture a very rare room. Yes, the negative pressure room, which is technically a hospital grade facility room, um, which is a single patient room that we use for certain dental procedures because one of the concerns that we have in dental office is certain instruments that we use that generates aerosols and droplets which may linger for a while in the air and may contain viruses and bacteria including coronavirus. Can you show us how it works real fast? For sure, yes. So let me show it to you. I'll need to close the door for you and turn on the negative pressure room and it will suck up all the room 
inside the area. I'll show you the tissue test. So as you can see with this technology and the elaborated fan that we have in the top, we are able to exhaust the entire room of the air at least 12 times per hour to make sure that all the viruses, bacteria are being sucked up through the uh, top of the building. Dr. Najafi, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate mm -hmm. it. If you guys have any questions, we have all this information. Just head to KSAT.com. Reporting on the Northwest Side, Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. Pretty impressive tissue test. Yeah, no kidding. That technology is amazing. Ooh. Like the 81 is degrees. Is that downtown? Is that amazing? <laughs> it's, it is. I mean, I can barely see it. Yeah, so, well, it's still a little bit hazy. You know, yesterday we had the haze roll in with the front. Got a little dusty outside. Brought some dust in from the plains. Still dealing with a little bit of that. It's going to be a warm day, even though that front did pass by yesterday. Boy, the aquifer's down a lot. It's down over a foot. 659.2. In your pollen count, we have four allergens, but they're all low, so not too much to worry about here. Mold, ragweed, juniper, and pigweed. That aquifer is still dropping. Not a lot of rain in the forecast. We're going to tell you how close we are to going back into stage one restrictions. That's coming up. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV. As we have been talking about all morning, today is the first day of early voting in the general elections. And with the global pandemic ongoing, it is sure to be unlike any we've ever experienced before. That is the topic of this week's episode of KSAT Explains. Here with a preview, Myra Arthur tells us the story of a local woman who was inspired to get involved in the political process this year for the first time ever. This summer's protests against police brutality and racism that ignited after the killing of George Floyd were a catalyst for so many people, including Valerie Reifert. I didn't go out to the first protest because I saw um, the counter protest and I was kind of like, oh, like that looked a little bit scary and I hate making decisions out of fear. And so I was like, next one I see, like I'm going. And she did. I went out to my first protest on June 1st and I just thought, you know, how amazing, you know, somebody should get out here and get people registered. And then um, before I went out to my next protest on June 3rd, I got deputized. She connected with other people who had a similar mission and Radical Registrars was born. Since then, the group has registered nearly a thousand voters, partnering with the League of Women Voters to create voting guides and recruiting poll workers. They've taken the necessary safety precautions while registering voters, but Valerie believes even with the world in the middle of a pandemic, it's important as ever to vote. We just need to change the way that we view voting and think of it as a tool to um, bring safety into our communities. And she's excited to be part of the process that gets prospective voters to the voting booth. It's crazy that I, I feel like I've seen a lot of um, elderly people who it's their first time getting registered to vote as well. So it's just been an honor. Every single one that I've gotten, it's been an honor to do. Myra Arthur, KSAT 12 News. KSAT explains voting during a pandemic will be available to stream this Thursday on the KSAT TV app or on KSAT.com slash explains. Let's get outside. It's 81 degrees. Mm -hmm. It's getting cooler as the week goes on. So this transition period is yeah. pretty cool, except for this, this mess up in the sky. What is all that? You were talking. <laughs> well, dust. what? I mean, There's some dust. Yeah, the front came through yesterday. It kicked up all the dust. You know, it delivers it from, you know, like West Texas and the plane. Is that causing sneezing? It could. It's, it was pretty light people. concentration, but it could. Uh, so we have that to contend with. It's going to get hot tomorrow, and then that cold front hits on Thursday. Ooh. So a lot to look at here. Let's start with the aquifer, though. We mentioned this. Today, we dropped back below 660. And you got to look at the 10-day average when we're talking about if we go into stage one or not. So the 10-day average is 660.3. We're getting awful close here. Now, a lot of things could happen. There's not a lot of rain in the forecast, but sometimes the aquifer can level off depending on pumping and that sort of thing. So we can't really project when or if we'll go into stage one, but I can tell you we're close. We're awful close to it. And without rain, uh, it certainly doesn't help the situation. The aquifer has sort of been dropping off. We're now 21 days, consecutive days without rainfall, measurable rainfall at San Antonio International. You go out to places like Del Rio and Uvalde, it's been like 25 days, something like that. So some rainfall would really be good. There is a small chance with our next front Thursday night, Friday morning, but it's a small chance and it's certainly not going to be a drought buster by any stretch of the imagination. Let's take a look at the time lapse. 
And you can see kind of a haze this morning as the sun came up. But now we're looking at mostly clear skies and uh, just a few thin high clouds working through. 81 degrees. East northeasterly winds at about 6. Dew point is down there at 47. That's, that's a low number. So you're going to get the big swing in temperatures from a cool morning to a pretty warm afternoon. Satellite picture shows a few of those high clouds trying to work through, but uh, there's just not much there. 83 in Hondo, 79 Bernie Stage, 83 right now in New Braunfels. It's 82 in Seguin, 80 out in Del Rio, where the cloud cover is a little thicker out there. 77 Fredericksburg and 83 right now in Victoria. Two points, uh, fairly dry north of Highway 90 into the hill country. You'll find 40s and 50s. You go south of there, 60s and even some 70s. So that front that came through yesterday sort of stalled out there well to our south. And that's where a lot of the humid air is. Uh, now the humidity I think will return tomorrow morning. Uh, there's going to be enough there. We may get some patchy fog to start on your Wednesday. And then we'll see those dew points really jump up and then come right back down with our front on Thursday. We'll see those dew points drop back down into the 40s. It'll be really dry. That's going to lead to some comfortable conditions, at least early in the weekend. You look across the country, and this is what's amazing to me. Typically this time of year, we get these big systems coming through. You got snow, you got thunderstorms, you got fronts. This is a pretty quiet weather map. There's just not a lot going on. It seems like this fall has been pretty quiet for most of the country, including here in Texas. There's hardly any cloud cover. And there's not a lot on the horizon. We are getting fronts, but they're just not producing a lot of rain for us. We can also look to the tropics sometimes to get us some rain. Obviously, we've had quite a bit of activity this year, but there's just one system right now that we're watching, about a 20% chance of development, according to the Hurricane Center. Uh, not a lot of worry right now. We'll keep an eye on its way out there. So here's what the forecast looks like temperature-wise. Tomorrow, it'll be a hot day, up around 92 so well above average, but here comes the front. This is our transition day on Thursday. Temperatures will be somewhere in the upper 80s, low 90s before this front comes through, sweeps through, and then we got temperatures, high temperatures in the low 70s on Friday with more cloud cover. So it's going to feel a lot more like fall by the end of the week. Forecast for today, 86 by 2 o'clock, up around 90 for a high, mostly sunny skies, and the extended forecast uh, we'll go 92 tomorrow, maybe with some patchy morning fog, some morning clouds, certainly on Thursday. Front comes through a slight chance for shower Thursday night, Friday morning. It will be windy on Friday. Friday night football is going to be breezy and it's going to be chilly. Temperatures will drop down into the 40s by Saturday morning, guys. So field goal tries are going to be a, a thing to wonder about, right? Could be a little bit tricky. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Justin. Yeah. Sorry, your forecast and your map is so boring out there. <laughs> it's bad. Sounds That's fine to up. me. Speaking of field goal tries, just ahead, we're going to talk about the Wagner Thunderbirds. They're going up against the Steel Knights Friday night. We'll hear what a few players have to say about the upcoming big time matchup. And coming up next, the latest update on Dak Prescott's injury. Sorry, David. I didn't know that was there. I gotcha. <laughs> Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Even though Dak Prescott now recovering from that horrific ankle injury and a return date is not clear, the Cowboys say they expect quarterback Dak Prescott to remain a Cowboy. Team Vice President Stephen Jones said his injury does not impact the long-term plans between the Cowboys and Prescott. The two did not reach a long-term contract in the offseason, with the Cowboys using the franchise tag to keep him for one year. Prescott will likely be out four to six months and the rest of the 2020 season. The big game and our big game coverage this Friday night is a showdown in District 27-6A, one of the toughest districts to maneuver in the entire state. The Wagner Thunderbirds put their number one ranking in 12 stop 12 on the line against the Steel Knights. Now, due to the COVID pandemic, the Thunderbirds did not kick off their season until last Friday night in their return to 6A football. They were able to beat sixth ranked Smithson Valley in an overtime 27-24 victory, giving them their first loss of the season, Smithson Valley. Now they have to face Steele in Linoff Stadium. The Knights already have three games under their belt, including their season opener with a team from Virginia, Life Christian. They lost that game and also lost to Reagan before opening district play with 24-6 victory at East Central last Friday. We're very motivated starting one and two. We need to finish uh, district games and uh, we know they're a great opponent. So and we're a good team. We just need to prepare. They're tough and physical. Uh, they made it pretty far last year in the playoffs. Uh, we're really going to have to bring our game, you know, just step up. Everybody be physical. And I think it's a great opponent, you know, going here on the season. They have good offense and good defense. Uh, watch film on them. Look pretty physical, pretty fast. We have our hands full. It's going to be a fight. It's not going to be as easy as it was back then. 
But we still have a chance in that, you know, people better not sleep on us because we will come. Kick off for that one in a lot of big games. That one's coming up Thursday or Friday night at Linoff Stadium, 730. All right, still ahead on the news at noon. If you're doing some Prime Day shopping today, you're probably going to have a lot of Amazon boxes laying around soon. How the company came up with a fun way to reuse those boxes. Plus, the confirmation hearings for Supreme Court nominee Amy Coney Barrett continues today. What topics senators are asking her about coming up after the break. We begin this half hour with the Supreme Court confirmation hearing. Lawmakers are getting their first chance to ask Amy Coney Barrett some questions. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has more from the Supreme Court as Republicans race to get, get her on the bench before Americans have their votes tallied on Election Day. The high stakes hearing for Judge Amy Coney Barrett continues this afternoon, today marking the opening round of what's expected to be a lengthy Q&A. President Trump's Supreme Court nominee facing a grilling from lawmakers after yesterday's opening remarks. Judges can't just wake up one day and say, I have an agenda, I like guns, I hate guns, I like abortion, I hate abortion, and impose you know, their will on the world. Senate Democrats ramping up the political stakes, arguing Judge Barrett's confirmation would spell the end of the Affordable Care Act and its protections for pre-existing conditions. It's my understanding that you were critical of Justice Roberts for upholding the ACA. Any issue that would arise under the Affordable Care Act or any other statute should be determined by the law. But Republicans remain steadfast in their confidence that they have the votes to confirm the president's third Supreme Court pick. Committee Chairman Lindsey Graham acknowledging yesterday that a nominee has never been confirmed so close to Election Day, while adding late Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg's view that presidents are elected for four years, not three, and should be able to nominate justices as long as they are still in office. But Democratic vice presidential nominee Senator Kamala Harris is firing back that the Senate is ignoring Justice Ginsburg's dying wish and the majority of Americans who say they should wait until after voters have chosen their next president and Senate before filling the seat. With this nomination, equal justice under law is at stake. During opening statements, Barrett spoke of her mentor, the late Justice Antonin Scalia, whose judicial philosophy she says she shares. If I'm confirmed, you would not be getting Justice Scalia, you would be getting Justice Barrett. With questions beginning today, the Senate Judiciary Committee is expected to vote on Barrett's confirmation next Thursday. From there, it will go to a full Senate vote, and barring something unforeseen, Barrett is expected to be confirmed by a narrow GOP majority before Election Day. Andrew Dimber, ABC News, Capitol Hill. And right now on the KSAT.com homepage, you can watch the confirmation hearings live. We will be streaming them every day between 8 in the morning and way into the evening, as long as they last. Now to the latest involving the coronavirus overseas. A second wave of cases has now hit Europe, some numbers surpassing the pandemic's early peaks. As winter approaches, parts of the UK are taking drastic new measures to try to curb the rapid spread. Infections quadrupling in just the past three weeks. Prime Minister Boris Johnson, a COVID survivor himself, unveiling a new three-tier system to try to slow the spread. Parts of the country now being designated either medium, high or very high, depending on the severity of the outbreak. These figures are flashing at us like dashboard warnings in a passenger jet, and we must act now. Meanwhile, Liverpool has been put in the highest category. Bars, gyms and restaurants are ordered to close starting tomorrow. And it's not just the UK. European countries have now some of the highest rates of infection in the world. But there's also growing anger about the way governments are handling the crisis. This as we head into winter, saying it could be worse. Swiss pharmaceutical company Roche is planning to sell a higher volume of COVID-19 antigen tests for laboratories by the end of 2020. In a statement, they explained the fully automated systems can provide test results in just 18 minutes. This has a rate of production of up to 300 tests per hour from a single analyzer. Rose also agreed to obtain an emergency tax approval from the United States FDA. Activists in Kentucky are preparing to drive voters to the polls today as early voting starts in several states. The campaign is led by the Breonna Taylor Foundation and the Louisville Urban League. More than 100 vehicles were ready to take voters to the polls. 
The caravan will then come back every Saturday until the election to take voters to polling stations to vote. A caravan organizer is urging voters not to wait until election day to cast their ballots. We want to make sure we get justice through voting. You know what I mean? That's one avenue that we can we can definitely seek justice is through voting, putting the right people in office in order to make things happen. And not only in this community, but in the United States of America. Hey, urges people to exercise their right to vote. Taking a look outside with live cam now. We know it's a little dusty. We've talked about that. But Justin, for the people who are ready to get their sweater weather on, mm -hmm. there's good news. Yeah, there I mean, is. We're finally getting like a good fall front right. on Friday. The bad news is it lasts like, you know, a day and a half. And then we're, we're back into the warmth again. But that's okay. We'll take what we can get. Uh, this morning, we were expecting some pretty chilly temperatures. We didn't quite get there. 66 here in San Antonio. One of the reasons for that, we did see a little cloud deck try to move in. Probably kept temperatures up just a little bit. But you go up into the hill country, got down to 53 this morning. Fredericksburg, 55 was the low in Kerrville. And looking across the uh, state right now, 79 Lufkin, 74 Dallas, 72 in Amarillo, 75 in El Paso, 76 in Marfa. Pretty comfortable day across the state. We'll see these numbers probably jump up close to 90 this afternoon, including here in San Antonio. You'll see some really hot stuff down in deep south Texas. That front didn't make it all the way down there, so the heat is still very much in place. And you look across the country, not a lot of really cold stuff. 46 Cut Bank, 61 Casper, 65 Chicago, 60 right now in Cleveland. Uh, nothing that's overly cold. Now, that front that's expected to move through here on Thursday, that will draw down some pretty cold air. And so places to our north will see some pretty chilly readings. Uh, right now, just a little bit of rain and snow up there across parts of Idaho. Some showers, Great Lakes. But other than that, a pretty quiet scenario across the country. Forecast for us will be up close to 90, as we mentioned. Mostly sunny skies and easterly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. Guys? Thank you, Justin. Still ahead, Cardi B stepping into a new line of work. How much fans can get these kicks for? And Prime Day kicks off today for Amazon members. Why this year's sales are over 40% higher than last year's Prime Day. That's next in Cheddar. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV. This is your daily tech and business briefing from Cheddar. Prime Day for Amazon members kicks off today. It's the day, or in this case, two days, where Prime members get access to hundreds of sales across the site. And even though the event was moved from their usual time in July due to the pandemic, Prime Day is expected to be huge this year. eMarketer forecasting almost $10 billion in sales this year. New on gaming platform Roblox moving forward with their plans to go public, a move that the company expects would double their valuation of $4 billion. Now, Roblox, a child-friendly video game platform, has spiked in popularity during the pandemic like other gaming companies. Back in July, Roblox reported 150 million monthly active users on the platform. And the most magical company on Earth is getting ready for a major reorganization, all to prioritize their streaming business. Disney planning to consolidate their media divisions into a single organization, which will be in charge of Disney Plus, ad sales, and content distribution. Disney says its primary focus now for entertainment will now be streaming. And the Chichetta Business and Tech Update. I'm Baker Machado, coming to you from Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan. Also in your consumer news this noon, Amazon kicking off Prime Day in an eco-friendly way. It's sending new boxes with a new augmented reality app on it. The new design will allow customers to scan a large white pumpkin shape on the side and then draw a face that comes to life when scanned like a QR code. It's similar to Snapchat AR filters. Amazon says the augmented reality experience is a low-cost way for people to celebrate and it's a fun way to reuse boxes before recycling them. The boxes are also made using less material. Well, Cardi B is making money moves to celebrate her 28th birthday. Over the weekend, the Grammy Award winning artist announced a new business collaboration with Reebok. The shoes have already sold out, but the rest of the Club C Cardi line comes out on November 13th. The sneakers will be available in both toddler and adult sizes, ranging in price from 50 to 100 bucks. 
Well, COVID-19 has turned the home rental industry on its head with hosts dealing with unpredictable cancellations and guests finding fewer options available on those mainstream sites. Yeah, COVID-19 has also opened the door to lesser known alternatives to popular sites such as Airbnb and VRBO. Here are some options for you to consider for your next vacation. For your next vacation, where do you plan to stay? I usually stay with friends or family. Typically a hotel. Airbnb. Airbnb. How about a home sharing network that is built exclusively for women, like Go Lightly? To gain access to the network, new members must be referred by current Go Lightly members. There is a one-time membership fee of $100, which is currently being suspended due to the pandemic. Airbnb has its own spinoff geared towards certain populations, such as Mr. B&B for the LGBTQ community and Nor b and for black travelers. And if you're worried about booking a place with a stranger, try My Place, which allows users to share housing with a trusted circle of friends and family. Another platform to try is Koala, which lets people rent out timeshares. Timeshare owners do get to set their own prices. So you may want to compare prices of the timeshare to hotels nearby to get the best deal. Crazy industry to be in right now. Crazy what? Crazy industry. Oh, crazy industry. Well, I can also say it's crazy weather. Everything's crazy. <laughs> Hashtag 2020. Listen, 2020 has been a little challenging. There's it's just no two ways around. 90-something degrees. Yeah, well. Uh, we're going to be up around 90 this afternoon. It will be above average. Uh, so far today, we're at 81. The average is 83, so we're definitely going to be above it. Probably not to the record, though, of 97, set back in 1991. So some hot stuff today and tomorrow. Then our cold front hits, bring some big changes. We've got another look at that forecast coming up. All right, when's this cold stuff coming? This, this, hot, this hot stuff's got to go, man. I, it's got to go. Oh, wow. There's the cold stuff coming. Kick it out the door. You have a uh, tough crowd today. Jeff. That's okay. That's okay. I, I know we're all expecting some cooler weather. I'm ready for it, too. Thursday. Thursday's the day, but you'll feel it on Friday. Thursday's sort of our transition day. Let's talk about the numbers. Where would we average this time of year? 83 degrees uh, for mid-October. Now, keep in mind, the average takes into account we get these ups and downs this time of year with these frontal boundaries and falls. So it gets warm. It gets cool. But the average is around 83 and we've been well above average, it feels like, for a while now. So we're in need of a good cold front. And I think the one on Thursday is uh, going to be good for us. 81 degrees right now. We've got partly cloudy skies. Humidity is at 30%. East northeasterly winds at about 6 miles per hour. 77 Bernie Stage, 80 in Comfort, 83 New Braunfels. You're at 85 in Pleasanton, mostly sunny there. And 84 Kennedy, 84 in Gonzales. And then uh, 82 right now, Carrizo Springs. Two points are uh, pretty good. We're in the upper 40s, so that's that's dry air for sure. 43 in Kerrville. It is a little more humid down to the south. That's where the front stalled out. So places like Laredo still seeing dew points in the 70s. It's sticky and warm down there. Uh, highs today uh, should be uh, close to 90. That's just 72, not, not the case. We should be up around 90 for a high. In a lot of places, we'll see highs right around 90 this afternoon. There has been a little bit of cloud cover out west. Places like Del Rio have seen some clouds through the morning. But other than that, it's, it's a mostly sunny day, a mostly sunny day across the state of Texas. And the whole lower half of the United States is dealing with mostly sunny skies. There's just not a lot there as far as any sort of lift or any sort of uh, cold front. But that does change as we get into Thursday. So uh, here's what the forecast looks like. Here comes our front. We would hope for a lot of rain, right? With this front, it's just not going to happen. It's not materializing. We don't have the, the lift that we need uh, along this front, the upper level support. We don't have that deep moisture. So we're not going to get showers and storms. Now, there could be a few showers along the front. We can't rule it out. And I think that would be Thursday night, Friday morning. But we're talking 10 to maybe a 20% chance of rain here, and it's not going to be a lot. Best chance will be south of San Antonio. So the forecast looks like this today, 86 degrees, mostly sunny by 2 o'clock, 4 o'clock. We're up around 89. We'll top out close to 90. Again, the air will be dry and uh, we'll see light winds east 5 to 10 miles per hour. Here's the extended forecast, 92 tomorrow. There's enough moisture in the morning where we could see a little bit of fog to start. It wouldn't last very long. And then some morning clouds for sure on Thursday. Front comes through Thursday evening with that, a 10% chance of rain. And then temperatures will tumble. It'll be very windy on Friday, 72 and mostly cloudy. And we'll see some breezy conditions. Probably winds trying to die down a little bit for Friday night football. But we start off at 49 Saturday morning. The weekend looks really good, although it does warm right back up on Sunday, guys.
Well, at least it's just in the 80s. That's that's better. Are we talking rocks in your pocket Wednesday? I mean, Friday for Wendy? Could Wendy, be. Wendy I mean, I think like, uh, late Thursday night and especially the early in the day on Friday, uh, we could see some gusts maybe up to around 30 miles per hour. Wow. Tie some stuff down. Yeah. Ooh. All right. Good to know. Stevie Nicks is releasing a new song for the first time in six years. After the break, a look at black and white montage.